Good morning. Good morning. What a gorgeous day again, huh? Who's got plans? Outdoor plans. Oh, now they put their hands down, right? <laughs> Nobody's going to say anything. Okay. So we had a vacation Bible school yesterday. It was so much fun. Again, remember, we went to, through a pandemic a few years ago, so we had very few kids. And so we had more and more kids. We had all these helpers and everything. And it was based on national parks, okay? So what's your favorite national park? Yellowstone. Yellowstone. Peninsula. Peninsula. Rocky Mountain. Excellent. Well, so envision that. Okay, so we're going to have some of that thematic stuff in there. Um, our children are going to sing what we call the mountain song. And then um, our first few songs are going to be talking about coming down to the river, okay? So envision maybe your favorite river in one of those parks and everything. But let's stand and let's welcome one another however you want to do it. Just welcome one another. Say your name if you don't know each other. You guys know who Alison Krauss is? Beautiful, saintly voice. So imagine her singing this, um, unless there's one of you who can sing like her and would like to come up front. Let's sing Down to the River to Play. Pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear 
the starry crown, good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sisters, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, sisters, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way and who shall wear the robe and crown good lord show me the way oh brothers let's go down let's go down come on down oh brothers let's go down down in the river to I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way. And who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, fathers, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, fathers, let's go down, down in the river to pray. Studying about that good old way And who shall wear the robe and crown Good Lord, show me the way Oh, mothers, let's go down Let's go down, come on down Oh, mothers, let's go down Down in the river to pray As I went down to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown, good Lord, show me the way, oh sinners, let's go down, let's go down, come on down, oh sinners, let's go down, down in the river to pray. Oh, Lord, thank you for this gorgeous day, for this time to worship you, to be together as brothers and sisters in Christ. And Lord, we indeed come down to that river to pray, to gather in your name, and to talk with you. Lord, you know our, our stories. You know our joys. You know our struggles. You know every single thing about us. And you know where we're at in this moment. So, Lord, we talk to you as a friend with honor and respect and yet like a father, and we are your children. So Lord, we share whatever is going on in our life, the things that we're struggling with, perhaps the sins that, we, that, that keep us down. But Lord, we now talk to you in the silence of our hearts. Among us, Lord, we have a couple anticipating the birth of their first child. We have a family who is going to be grieving the loss today of their, their father, their grandfather, as we celebrate his life. And Lord, we all have stories, whether it's health crises or celebrations like birthday parties today for some others too. Lord, we turn to you because you're the one who created us. You're the one who loves us without condition. And so, Lord, we need you. And sometimes we don't recognize that in our society, but we certainly need you. So, Lord, lift us up, build us up, encourage us this day as we come to honor you in our worship, in our singing, in our learning from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's join in ancient words. Holy words 
arms long preserved for our walk in this world. They resound with God's own heart. Oh, let the ancient words impart. Words of life, words of hope, give us strength, help us cope. In this world, wherever we roam, ancient words will guide us home. Ancient words, ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts, or oh, let the ancient words impart. You may be seated. All right. So we've been studying Acts chapter. I'm not hearing a lot of confidence. <laughs> Some of you have been with me for three or four weeks, and you still don't know what chapter we're on. So Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47, one of my key passages in the Bible. I like looking at this early church, and not that they were perfect. They needed to huddle together as they were. Remember that the early church... Um, was a rebel group, right? They, they kind of, they still want to hold on to Judaism, but because they were different, the Jews didn't necessarily accept what they were doing, right? Some did eventually, but they were a new thing. So they were kind of, they needed each other more than ever. It kind of like Christians in China, where they need to huddle up in kind of underground groups. That's how important it was. And so one of the key phrases is they devoted themselves to what? Prayer. To prayer. Yeah, you guys got that. Okay, it just says that up there. That's really good. But, you know, there's a few other things, too, that we talked about the other weeks. It was the fellowship, which is koinonia fellowship, doing life deeply together. It was breaking bread, and I thought for sure you guys would bring up food, how important that is, right? Um, and, and obviously to prayers, right? One of the key passages in the Bible that really talks about prayer, and this is, this is great for us to really hear, is this from Second Chronicles? If my people who are called by not my name will humble themselves, okay, humble themselves, will kind of bow down in, in, in a sense, turn to the Lord. And we as Americans are very independent. We're very private. We do things on our own. We don't always rely on the Lord unless a crisis shows up, right? But this is where you humble yourself and pray. You seek God's face and turn from wicked ways. Then the Lord says, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. And perhaps God is leading our nation towards being humble and praying. So the sign, oh, hey, nope, sorry, I jumped ahead. Um, the sign of a faithful relationship with God is by how much we turn to the Lord in prayer. Let me say that one more time. A sign of our faithful relationship with God is by how much we turn to the Lord in prayer. It's like any relationship. It comes down to conversation, right? And that's all prayer is. It's conversation with God. So when there's something going on that's great, do you praise God from whom all blessings flow? That's awesome. Like today, many of you came in here and just said, what a beautiful day. In a sense, that is praise. That's praise of God. God created this day. Do you give thanks for the food that is on your table, for the hands that have prepared it, for the house you live in, for the car you drive, for the job you may have, for the family and friends, and the list goes on. Do you confess your sins, knowing that God is faithful and just, and will cleanse us, forgive us our sins, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness? Do we pray for people's needs and present them before the Lord? trusting that God will provide. Those are all signs that we're engaged in prayer. Now, how many of you would say that you're good at, at praying on a regular basis? Good. Fantastic. How many of you would say not so much? Okay, and then there's a lot of you who are just totally spaced out and don't have a clue. What's going on? All right. I see a lot from up here, okay? Um, 
So I, I go through swings, okay? When I was down in Belize, here we were, we were doing these home visits, and we were visiting people, and they would share their lives with us. And holy cow, we would pray for them on the spot. But when I heard things, and then I, I said, is it okay if I take a picture so I can remember you, so I can pray for you? And that helps tremendously. But it's a growth area for me. I go through ebbs and flows where I'm praying consistently all the time and remembering all sorts of people and have a list and everything. And there's times when it's like a sunny, beautiful season and I get distracted by other things. Don't say golf, but I do. Um, So, you know, and that's kind of one of the things to recognize. But what helps me is a regular rhythm of worship because that helps me then pray to God, right? And to praise God and begin that rhythm. And that's why that's so important. Well, as you know that uh, Tuesday mornings, these guys are the ones that we do prayer together every Tuesday. Now, Larry left us, and now he's in the promised land. Remember that? So, yeah, but this is a delightful group of men, which we have most of them here this morning. Um, And it's in our rhythm of sharing our lives, studying the apostles' teaching, and then praying at the end of that time and lifting up the people that we conversed about in our own lives that really gets us in that devotion to prayer, right? So what does it mean to be devoted? Well, I, let me give you this. When I think of that word devoted, I remember growing up as a kid and I got hooked on this song by this duo called who? The Everly Brothers. Remember their perfect harmonies and perfect hair? Yeah, you look at their hair perfect, right? And they sang devoted to you. Now that's the romantic side of devotion. Like I've been devoted to Chris since August of 1988, that's 35 years if you did the math, 35 years of dating, 31 years of marriage, officially on Tuesday this week. But what does devoted really mean when we talk about God? As a verb, it's to concentrate on a particular pursuit, a focus, occupation, purpose, or cause. I like to devote one's time to reading, or let's say, to prayer. Or it could be like a vow, like a marriage vow, or a vow to God right? It's set apart to dedicate by solemn or formal act, to consecrate, like someone who may be devoted to God. As an adjective, it's a feeling or demonstrating loyalty or devotion, being ardent or devout. Again, set apart or consecrated. So to devote yourself to something is to really set it apart and dedicate it as a high priority, as a major purpose in your life. I do really well having a prayer team that we get together every Wednesday. I do really well, particularly in the winter, and you got to love the swivel chairs in the prayer room, and you just have that and put on the light and perhaps a candle or something like that, but setting that space and time. So these practices of the early church, such as learning the apostles' teaching, And when I say that, that means the New Testament in writing. It's the epistles and the gospels and more. They devoted themselves to koinonia fellowship, doing life deeply together, to the breaking of bread, which we said is meals together, as well as the what? Lord's Supper, communion. And all these activities were central. They were day-to-day core disciplines of their faith because these people were so devoted to these core practices, their faith abounded, and their witness was strong. And the fruit was that the Lord added daily to their number those who were being saved, because they were strong in their witness. They were committed. Then what does it mean to be devoted to prayer? When these Christians gathered for meals together, for worship and in service to those in need, Leaning on God through prayer was a constant. It was a given. It was a natural response to the relationship and dependence on God. So let's, let's pick this apart. Envision a meal where not only did someone say a grace, a prayer for thankfulness for the food, and back then, food was more scarce. It was harder. We've got an abundance, right? Less so in their context. But They may add more about the people who served the meal, who provided, grateful for those who were all present. And remember, they invited their neighbors. And some of these neighbors, they may have not known all that well. Some of these neighbors did not maybe know the faith. Maybe they were Jewish. Maybe they were not. And so 
they lifted them up in prayer. And that's how they talked to God. It was just natural response. And perhaps they even knew situations of what was going on in the community and maybe in the broader world, and they would bring that up in prayer. And as they shared their lives over this meal, more prayer points would arise that led to hands-on prayer after the meal and during their time of learning from the apostles' teaching. So back then, it was more oral. They may not have had so much written down unless they had some things written down from the Old Testament. But they would dialogue, and then if somebody had a real need, if somebody said, you know, I, I really need some help with this, or I'm suffering this health ailment, then right there on the spot, they would lay their hands and pray for that person. Okay? And so if someone needed healing, they would do that. And they would often use oil. What oil do you think they used? Olive oil, probably, right? Probably scented. Um, and, and praying for complete restoration of their health. That's what Koinonia Fellowship is about. Well, as I mentioned earlier, as I and our mission teammates have shared, we went on some 20-plus home visits. I'd be curious really how many we did because we were all spread out and we did various ones on various days. But many of these people had situations of need for improved health, for better relationships. Some were really grieving the loss of loved ones in big-time ways and just basic needs to be met. And as we listened and asked good questions and sought to understand the people in their situation, we then prayed for them right there on the spot, no hesitation, now, some of us were very comfortable with, with that because I can do that at any time. I've just been trained that way. But so many years ago, I would freak out about that kind of a thing, which is natural if you haven't done that. But God brought hope in those moments. Have you ever been prayed for on the spot from a friend, pastor, or somebody? Raise your hand. Make it bold. All right. What was that like for you? Was it meaningful, powerful? Yeah, some of you go th thumbs up. Several weeks ago, I, I was mentioning something uh, to a few friends, um, and they prayed for me on the spot, and we, it was just a holy moment. Um, God does stuff through that. So we, we learned a lot from the people that we um, served with in Belize, and I'm going to reinforce this. So some of you have heard this before, but I want to reinforce what we learned. So again, you've got Pastor Israel and his wife Tanya um, from the Baptist church there that we worked with. The Baptist Church, along with Children's Cup, do home visits, as I understand, maybe on a weekly basis, or at least on a very regular basis. And they would go to these homes, they would set them up in advance, call them up and say, hey, we'll be here about that time, and, um, and, and show up and, and be present to people. And just, just share their lives, ask how they're doing, is there anything we can pray for you about? So that model inspired me. You'd go, what would that look like in our context, right? <laughs> First of all, you got to get a hold of people. What is their means? Is it, is it text, email, Facebook, phone, you know? Or is it going to go into spam? You know, you just don't know what you're going to get. But you reach out. So we talked about this on Thursday night, the council that looks something like this, minus a few people um, that should be on here, and some other leaders that we would like to visit the congregation, okay? Call people up and say, hey, can we stop by? You know, it might be one or two of us at a time and just stop by and just check in. Like, how are you doing? How is life? Is there anything we can pray for you about? As simple as that. And so a kind of a goal for 2023, 2024. We'll see what, how the Lord leads us. But we believe that this is worthwhile, especially following the pandemic. Who's connected? Who says St. Olaf, this is their church? This is their church community that they do life deeply with. So we see that as very important. Was it last week or two weeks ago where, remember, we sent out the 12 um, disciples who are now called apostles, meaning sent ones, right? And then right after that, the next chapter, there was how many? Good. You guys do remember that. That's great. And the Spirit does a mighty work we are, when we are sent out and go to do these visits. So... How much does the Bible emphasize prayer? I love this particular passage where it says, Rejoice always, as many of you were doing this morning. We were celebrating the glorious day. Pray continually. Be in a rhythm of prayer. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And that can be hard, even the most difficult circumstances, but that's a great rhythm of life. 
Now, there's so many different passages, but I wanted to give you short snippets to remind us about prayer. Philippians 4, don't be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Mark 11, therefore I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Romans 8, likewise the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to say, for as we ought. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. That happened to me recently where I was in a prayer situation, going, what in the world do I pray? And the Spirit gave me the words, and I'm going, hey, I didn't make that up, that's for sure. Matthew 6, but when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. James 5, therefore confess your sins to one another and pray for one another. Pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. Matthew 26, watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And Colossians, continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. Have any of you been in our prayer room? Some will call it the library. If you haven't, check it out today. Turn on the lights. Um, it's a beautiful space. Um, Mary Hershoff, among others, uh, put it together in, in beautiful touches. Again, it's all about the comfy swivel chairs, so sit in those and give it a test ride, okay? Uh, but there's special lighting, there's candles, crosses. Um, and most Wednesdays, we have a team praying in the afternoon, somewhere between 4 and 5, for a variety of things for our ministries, for our missions, and for people. So when you write on a prayer card, we are praying there. It's all confidential. We keep it right there unless you say put it on the screen and then we put it on the screen. Um, and this is great. We are a praying people. Most Lutheran churches do not have a prayer room nor a prayer team. So what I need to say is way to go. We've got something going. We are a praying church. But I would say we could grow in this. I believe that we need more people to pray with us, even in silence. So if you're not one to pray out loud, just come and be with us. So Wednesdays, we're looking at more 4.30 right now. That can change in times. But if you're interested, let me know to make sure that you're in the loop of when we're praying and where we're praying. Um, I'd also like to offer this about hands-on prayer in person. So let's say it's a Sunday morning. You show up here, and you've got something going on in your life, and, and you really could use some prayer. Pull me aside. I'll grab another person who would be willing to pray, and we'll pray with you in the prayer room or somewhere, just because I think it's that important, okay? So feel free to do that anytime, or Saturday night, or anytime during the week. Call us up. I can set something up so we always have two of us who are praying together with you. Um, coaching and prayer. You guys know I'm a life coach, and so I often will ask, hey, how would you like to conclude our coaching session? Um, and if I know that they're a Christian, go, would you like me to pray for you? And in that prayer, God gives me the words to kind of summarize the session, and it's amazing what God does in that time of prayer. And so it's a very important piece, especially when I do grief um, and end-of-life coaching. It becomes a vital piece. So St. Olaf is very intentional about the prayers of the people time during worship. We get prayers that we can use that some others have crafted, and we use certainly parts of that, but many times we'll make it very, very specific to our church, to the theme of the day, and, um, and then tying in the people that we know who need prayer. And that takes some energy and effort that Scott and Mary and Dave and others take the time to do that. But it's, it's a beautiful thing, and it's a great engagement or practice. Some of you journal and you write down prayers that way, and that's a great thing. So, devoting ourselves to prayer is simply prioritizing and turning to the Lord to everything in our lives. The joys, the struggles, the thanksgivings, and the praises. We need the Lord, and so we turn to God when we're in need or someone else is in need. That's what Christians do. 
It's something that many of us can grow in. Um, but this is a calling for us to grow and be mature in our faith. Let's pray. Lord, again, thank you for these brothers and sisters in Christ as we live this Acts 2 community out, as we seek to do life deeply together. Grow in us the desire to talk to you more often, the desire and the focus to turn to you in all our situations, that we would lean on you as our God. Lord, help us to pray for others, perhaps in a particular place in our home or here at church, and also give us the courage to potentially pray out loud in those times when we are given the opportunity to do so. In all these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, I'm going to invite our VBS kids, any helpers, helpers, we really, like, need you now, because um, we don't have all the kids. I don't know if they're camping in a national park or something, um, but they're doing something, that's for sure. So there's a few songs that really hit it well. Um, yeah, we could do that together. Um, so, there we go, calling them out, right? You can see them out there. Let's go. <laughs> They're going, oh my gosh, I don't know if I even know this song and all this stuff. Um, okay, and now, congregation, can you please stand? We're going to do a song. This is the place... We camp. If you look into the fellowship room, the Monas family d decorated everything, and there's a tent. There's an outhouse, if anybody needs relief, and, um, and, and a, a raft that's deflating. Um, but in any case, um, we did this song, so when it says, high a five, you high a five with the people near you. When it says, do the wave, however you want to do the wave. And then a do -si do you hook up. All right? Can we do that? See if you pick up on it, okay? You guys be really loud. This is the place we camp, yeah, to celebrate our common ground. This is the place we camp, yeah, plenty of love to go around. High a five, high a five, high a five, high a five, oh, 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 oh. High a five, high a five, high a five, high a five, no one is alone. The place we camp, yeah, welcome to the common ground. This is the place we camp, yeah, plenty of love to go around. Do the wave, do the wave, do the wave, do the wave. Oh, oh, do the wave, do the wave, do the wave, do the wave. No one is alone. This is the place we camp, yeah, to celebrate our common ground. This is the place we camp, yeah, plenty love to go around. do si do do si do do si do do si do oh 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 do si do do si do do si do do si do No one is alone. This is the place we camp, yeah, to celebrate our common ground. This is the place we camp, yeah, plenty love to go around. I did great. Now we're going to do the mountain song. And I know you guys can do this. Now, we'll, we'll teach it, okay? This is your aerobics for today. Get your heart rate up, okay? Um, so it goes like this. To you, O oh Lord, I lift up my soul. In you I trust, O oh Lord. And that repeats itself twice. And then when we do higher than the mountains, just do what the kids are doing, deeper than the sea. Wider than the ocean is your love for me. Don't whack the person next to you. And then you're with me on the mountains, valleys below. You're right here beside me everywhere that you go. All right? Can you guys handle that? I know you can. Higher, higher than the mountains, deeper than the sea. 
may be seated. But children, you stay up here. You can share the verses, right? Or what were you going to do? Or not? You guys did great. Did anybody get that on video? Because I've never seen you that active before. All right, we had three days for our VBS that we did. Um, and we have our verses up here, so we're just going to have the kids read them for you. Um, just a couple notes. We had so about 25 kids register and about 20, I think there were 22 that came. And many of them were not from our church. So that was really awesome. So, yeah. And we have the most awesome volunteers. You saw many of them up here today. And some of them were still hiding back there. <clears throat> so here we go. Here's our first day's verse. God will help you obey. All right. Thank you. And our next day, we had 1 John 3.16. This is love, Jesus Christ, give his life for us. Very good, thank you. And Palms 33, 20 to 21. We have hope in the Lord because he helps us. Thank you. Thank you. Nice job, guys. Way to go. <laughs> the offering and sing, We Give Thee But Thine Own. So again, this, this hymn um, was my, um, well, what do they call it, my tryout for the choir at Luther College. We, we had to sing this, and it was our test. So this is ingrained in my system. So let's join along with, We Give Thee But Thine Own. We give thee but thine own, whatever the gifts may be, all that we have is thine alone, I trust, O God, from thee. May we thy bounties thus, as stewards true receive. Thou blessed us to thee our first fruit give the captive to release to God the lost to bring to teach the way of life and peace it is a Christ like thing and we believe thy word our faith may be whatever we do for thy O Lord we do it unto thee God of field and forest sea and sky you are the giver of all good things sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that the world may be fed with your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join me in confessing our faith through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived, he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Between the petitions that Scott crafted for today, we will be singing, Lord, listen to your children praying. Gathered as one body, we join in prayer for the church, the world, and all in need. Lord, we come to you as children praying. You take the time to comfort us and just listen as we share these innermost things, whether spoken or left unsaid, our joys and our fears, for ourselves and for others we may not even know. You hear our prayers and make sense of it all. Draw us more deeply into this conversation. Help us to see prayer not as a last resort, but as a first response. Lord, listen to your children pray. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children pray. Send us We thank you, Lord, for the many children learning of you and of your promises at VBS this weekend, some children from our congregation and others from the community, seeds of faith planted that they'll take home and share. Help us, Lord, to nurture these youth, passing on the faith of generations. Lord, listen to your children pray. Spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children pray. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. The wind and waves bow to your command. Lord, bring relief from sweltering heat. Calm the wildfires that rage. Send rains to quench drought-stricken land. Teach us how to better care for your creation and how to better respond to extreme conditions. Lord, listen to your children pray. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, Listen to your children pray. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. Please join me in praying for these friends and family. The family of Shirley Teagues, Jane C., Patrick C., Dave T., Mark T., Jordan L., Andrew, and the family of Scott Grieve. For the citizens of Ukraine and Eastern Europe, and for those serving in the military around the globe, and those who have returned home. If there are any other prayer requests, you can call them out loud now or in the silence. Lord, listen to your children pray. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children pray. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. Lord, call a truce between warring nations to groups in conflict. Soften their hardened hearts to see the suffering they've inflicted. Replace the hate and greed and hunger for power with a genuine compassion, a love poured out even on their enemies. Lord, listen to your children pray. Spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your 
Heavenly Father, we lift these prayers to you, trusting in your mercy and grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Monday, Thursday, as Jesus gathered with the disciples, he taught them to celebrate what he was about to do for them in giving his life away, to remember them in the breaking of bread and sipping of the vine, which they would do often, but to make this a holy, separated moment. And so when he took the bread, he broke it, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Following supper, he took a cup. He gave thanks. He gave it for all the drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us join in the prayer he taught his followers to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Again, all are welcome to the table. If you're a guest here today, you know that you are welcome. You may receive this holy sacrament as one of us in the body of Christ. And so we have wine or grape juice. The grape juice is lighter colored. And then we have regular bread as well as gluten-free. So please come to the table right down the center aisle, and then you kind of disperse and go back to your seat. Please come to the table. One body in this 
just one Lord Many the gifts Many the works One in the One Lord of all One cup of blessing which we bless And we, though many Throughout the earth We are one body in this one Body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. You know, it seems like we should do at least one more thing this summer, shouldn't we? Sure, let's play some music. Let's do some music. What should we do? What style? Bluegrass? Let's try bluegrass, huh? And uh, man, we've got some food left from um, some other event we did. What was that called? Ice Cream Social. So we got plenty of food. Hey, somebody's going to bring corn. And um, I think it's the Foyt's corn which is famous right music is outstanding and we even got some of our young people playing so did you want to say something ma'am it's all about our infamous hospitality we are hosting and it's best when we host when we show up right and so bring friends invite people this is this is this is like a block party right we're inviting kind of our neighbors and friends and work associates. This is a big deal when we have these events. It's a great opportunity. Instead of you having to clean up your house and prepare all the food and everything, it's all right here, huh? Heck of a deal. And seeing that you're not anxious to go home, don't forget about the upcoming Out Outreach for Hope uh, bike ride and walk and so on. That's coming up September 24th. So we'd like you for to um, register if you can. You can walk, you ride, you can enjoy the... The lunch, you can do all kinds There's of things. There's a run now, too, isn't there? You can there? run and whatever you want to do, um, as long as you're there and enjoy it yourself. That's all that counts. So look at the sign on the way going out, and then I'll bug you from this point forward. If and you've then, never done it before, make it a goal this year. It's great. We're going to have a walk. St. Olaf, uh, Olaf has been significant in supporting Outreach for Hope. It's great to have us show up. All right, Tad, go up and down. That's your cue. Everybody stand up. Boy, you're slow to the draw, some of you folks. Okay. Let's do We Are Called.
sing, sing a new song. Sing of that great day when all will be one. God will reign and we'll walk with each other as sisters and brothers united in love. We are called to act with justice. We are called to love tenderly. We are called to serve one another. peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.